Hi guys, welcome to my show, and uh, I'd like to thank you for uh, joining my show and for those of uh, of you who are new. And this I just want to share to you how what how I train in chess, uh, so I can get better. So when hopefully when the pandemic is over, I can start going, start playing in uh, over the board chess competition and earn uh, earn um, like my international master norms and grandmaster norms all right so it's tuesday we're going to do some strategy um, i'm going to start the clock right now so i put 20 minutes because i read i read that i read from grandmaster jacob boggard's book that uh, usually it's good to have a time limit of 20 minutes and do your best in order to solve the puzzle or chess position do all of your calculation and if you cannot if you cannot um, I mean it's it's better to have a limit otherwise it might take a long time and it's not realistic if you're playing in a comp in a uh, over the board tournament it's kind of hard to spend 20 minutes in one move all right here we go can you say about this position and black black is under attack black screen is under attack uh, I guess if I'm black I either have to move the um, uh, the queen or cover with bishop to c5 or black white's bishop attack against my king with c5 with pawn block and also I have to write down the moves uh, after when I'm solving this one so I can I can uh, compare my notes with a book later and figure out what I what I calculated correct and what uh, variation I did wrong Okay, so either move my queen because white's bishop is attacking my queen. So either move my queen maybe to e8 or block with bishop to c5. I don't know about blocking it with uh, blocking the attack with a pawn because if I block the I push the c c pawn to c5, then my bishop is is bad my bishop's diagonal is going to be gone so maybe I can play bishop c5 here the idea is if for example bishop takes c5 say oops, 
go here then take then I take and if it takes I do get double pawns but those pawns are controlling important squares such as f5 and d5 so I, I'm not sure if why be able to exploit those double pawns so sure Okay, bishop c5, what else can white do? Maybe you can play d4. Then I just move my bishop to d6. Hmm. So in this pawn structure, this like um, um, a king's pawn opening, it's very important. The, uh, mo the four most important squares in this position are the f4, a d4, f5, and on d5 and usually white's knight goes um, to f5 so it can go knight g3 to, to f5 um, but in here usually also it's nice for black to put the knight on d4 but since white has a c3 pawn uh, it cannot um, it, it controls the um, d4 square properly so Uh, I can play like bishop d6 then if white plays b4 then I can play bishop d6 the idea is to just retreat my bishop then pressure the b pawn later uh, okay bishop c5 b4 bishop d6 and now knight g3 okay then a5 yeah yeah I think that's good after bishop c5 b4 then just bishop d6 with idea of a5 but if white plays b4 it's a bad positional move because if white pushes its pawn to b4 then it blocks this bishop diagonal right now it's attacking the queen if white plays b4 then uh, it's just blocking its own bishop diagonal so not sure about b4 but after bishop c5 what else can white do maybe bishop takes C5, can take C5. Bishop C5 takes here. Then maybe Knight E3. Protecting this bishop. Hmm, interesting. But I can I think I can take. Knight takes then B5. Alright. Yeah. I can just take, let's say knight takes C4. Then again B5 forcing this knight to move away so I can capture this b2 pawn okay. alright and what else can white do
Okay, I think white after black plays bishop c5, white can just uh, take, just take the bishop, then I don't know maybe bishop takes bishop pawn takes bishop then knight knight here right yeah with the problem with knight g3 it's not gonna go anywhere and knight f6 the idea is to go knight h5 to trade the, the knights the question is wh why would white waste two moves to be able to trade the knight a knight on f6 i mean is, is the knight on f6 that valuable interesting position it's a quiet position it's a king's pawn opening and lots of positional ideas if i can also i think w blacks white spawns on the queen side particularly here b3 and a4 can be weak if i can transfer my knight from from f6 to uh a5 maybe like that Knight c6 to knight a5. It's, ju it's just a thought. Just an idea. Because white already pushes pawns too far, and every pawn moves create weaknesses. So, we'll see. So if I were to move here, I would play bishop c5 just to cover that threat. Uh, just to defend, first of all, to defend blacks. White's attack against the queen. I would play bishop c5 here. Then figure out how to exploit white's pawns, weak pawns in the center, maybe with a maneuver. Yeah. Let me write my moves. All right, I think we are uh, ready to just solve this po this position. All right, let's go. Okay. So, coat, queen versus two rooks. The queen's favorite activity is capturing undefended pawns. Due to its mobility, it creates double threats more easily than other pieces. The rooks are strong when attacking isolated pawns for the reason it is generally to the rook's advantage if the minor pieces are exchanged. The minor pieces are otherwise natural defenders of the pawns. 
The pawn structure is an important issue. The player with the weakest pawns often has the worst position. Weaker pawns, like here, I think these are weak pawns for against white. Okay. Both the rooks and the queen have weak sides. The queen is the worst blockading piece and is therefore not good when fighting against a pass pawn. The rooks are, on the other hand, often quite helpless if they lack open files. That is why the combination of a queen and some pawns is very strong attacking unit against the castle king. Okay, queen and rook. Queen. Yeah, combination of queen and some pawns. It's a very strong attacking unit against the castle king, queen and pawns. The rooks are not there to defend. The first example is illustrative since it shows both cases a position which is superior for the rooks and a position where the queen has both a weak king and weak pawns to play against. Okay, so here, oh, so black played rook takes d1. This is a game between Grandmaster Axel Smith, the author of this book, and Kovashev, Daniel in Norway, Oslo year 2011 so Kobashev was black and he played rook takes d1 no 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 in the real game black played bishop queen e8 bishop takes e6 queen takes e6 c4 bishop d4 oh this is nice instead black could have taken on d1 before moving the queen i cannot back i cannot take back with the rook since the bishop on a3 hangs in after okay so i'm gonna just bishop c5 i'm just wondering i'm gonna turn on the uh, stockfish for short time and see what stockfish is up to queen e8 is the best move what what's wrong with my move bishop c5 bishop takes takes d8 takes d8 takes here takes there takes takes rook a2 okay so what are you doing uh, just protecting this one, maybe white is planning to play knight d2 or even rook d2. Yeah, after I think this is perfectly fine. D5. It's just point eighteen. Small advantage for white. Okay. All right. Now it's point fourteen, so almost almost equal uh, position, according to the chess engine stockfish. All right. So in the game, black played rook takes d1, sacrificing, trying to get two rooks for a queen. Rook takes d1, so now bishop takes e7. If queen takes d1, then queen e8. Code, I have some coordination problems. Either I lose control of the d file after queen e2. Let's say bishop takes e6 and takes e6. Then I cannot cannot go rook d8 anymore. Because queen is just gonna take it. But what about queen e2? Then rook d8? Okay, rook d8. Or I got bound to the to defense of the b3 pawn after. Okay. Alright, so here bishop rook takes d1 okay so white is forced kind of forced to take the queen after rook takes d1 bishop e7 then rook takes a1 with a uh, queen for two rooks white would get would like to get at least an extra pawn bishop takes f6 okay c6 takes bishop then rook then rook f8 now this one is pinned if the rook moves boom winning for uh, for black so that's the difference between so bishop takes f6 the correct move first the proper move order of moves or order of moves bishop takes f6 bishop takes c4 trying to take the knight if g takes and if pawn takes here then yeah this is a mistake then takes i mean look, look at Look at blacks, pawns, isolated pawn on h6, isolated double pawns on e file. Not very good. Takes c4, takes c4. 
if queen g3 oh bishop f2 and king f2 rook f takes knight then rook takes bishop Ooh, nice after king e3 code this position is a good example of what the rooks dream about there are a lot of weak pawns yes so it's good for for uh, if you have two rooks it's nice to have a uh, weak pawns against your opponent and also uh, open file for your rooks there you go this position is a good example of what the rooks dream about there are a lot of weak pawns to gradually double up against white will either be able to defend them or nor create any play of his own hence black is winning all right yeah queen g3 is uh is a mistake because of the tactical bishop takes stuff too and if queen takes then rook takes just like forking oops forking this one rook and knight winning for black i mean uh, queen king and queen bishop takes c4 b takes c4 uh, g takes f6 Queen takes f6, then rook a2, and thought that white was better. However, black gets enough counterplay after rook a2 takes here, then rook takes f. Okay, bishop takes here. Okay, n ah, okay. Rook a1, threatening to take the knight. Knight here, rook there. Quote The final verdict on rook takes d1 is that it leads to a situation where the queen enjoys the position. So black gets enough counterplay here, rook d8. But the author of this the book, uh, Grandmaster Axel Smith, says that uh, that rook takes d1 is a mistake because queen has uh, a lot of activity in this position. Or bishop a3 but what is white's best move i mean what is black's best move here after bishop a3 it's turning on this stockfish chess engine so queen a8 is the best move for for black it's not even bishop to c5 okay yeah. so it's a passive defense it's not uh, exchanging the rooks because White, uh, white has too much uh, activity instead of uh, taking the rook on d1. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, and that's it for today. I hope hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.